this store started out as as a general store. My grandfather bought it. I think he bought it when it was new, when it was built, and um, or he had it built. It, in reference to like the rafters, the way that they're they're put together, it kind of looks like it was probably his doing. It was before like big supermarkets. This was the place you could go to get shoes, clothes. Um, he sold saddles. Um, he sold boots. A lot of cowboy stuff, you know, riding stuff. He was into horseback riding. Cutworm was my grandfather's nickname. And I remember the first time I heard someone refer to him as Cutworm. Um, it was a guy fishing, and we were driving by, and he stopped and turned the truck off and spoke to him. He guy said, hey, Cutworm. And as after we talked to him for a sec, we kept moving, and I said, why did that guy call you Cutworm? And he said, everybody calls me Cutworm. <laughs> I'd never heard it at that point I'd never heard it they definitely broke the mold after that guy and now I'm working out of this shop so if it wasn't for him then I wouldn't have a shop so that's the reason that the business was called Cutworm Cutworm Specialties is the business From the beginning, I think that opening my own shop and having a having my own place to work, it was a desire not to work for somebody else anymore. I took in whatever I could to make to make a buck so that I could pay my bills. Anything from like working on four wheelers or dirt bikes, people would bring lawnmower decks that were broken to for me to fix. And then as I was doing all these small jobs. I started to be, gain a reputation in the area as a guy who could fix what nobody else could. So it was the weird thing that somebody has that you can't get parts for anymore or something like that. I was the guy that could fix that. Those little jobs sort of paved the way and also gained experience from those jobs. All of the, all of the stuff that I think that I've done my entire life, whether it be skateboarding or you know, riding dirt bikes or even the artwork that I did in high school all sort of paved the way. I didn't have um, any formal training. Um, I didn't do very good in school. And I learned how to do what I do under this roof. Whenever I bought my lathe or my mill, I didn't even know how to use them. And I was willing to uh, take that risk, buy the equipment, and know that I was willing to stand in front of that thing for hours and figure out what it likes and what it doesn't like. And, and if you do that, if you're willing to do that, that it will happen. My work is a little different. I wouldn't consider myself in any shape or form to be a traditional car builder. I'm not trying to build you your 32 high boy. That's just not my thing. I'm not trying to build what that guy has. You know, I don't scour around the internet trying to find these quirky little cool ideas from other people. I just don't do that. If, if I see it somewhere else, I go, well, that's been done. So I'm gonna go, I'll, I'll go to another direction. But I also, I don't really have like this distinct plan. I don't have this manila envelope with a bunch of notes and, you know, drawn out renderings of what I'm trying to build. I have a general idea. I have another friend who's in the metal shaping world and he said that um, my work is more like artwork and so he called my cars art rods which he's kind of coined that phrase for what I do but it's I'm not trying to be traditional. beginning I was building cars for for me or I was maybe doing work on a car for a friend or something like that because I didn't have any business sooner or later you know you build something that a lot of people are noticing and there was a large period of time there where I wasn't doing any work for myself I was only doing customer cars and it's really easy to 
fall into a position where it isn't fun anymore because you're not doing anything for yourself and you can't do that. I think you know, I think anybody who who does uh, something creative or something that they love to do for their work has to do something for themselves. Otherwise, you lose sight of what you're doing it for in the first place. So the jawbreaker is is that kind of my wagon is that kind of a build. It was something that I did for myself, and it was making me feel good about what I've accomplished. A long time ago, I, I built, did a lot of work, and I can look back on that and not understand how I did it with so little. Um, but I still did it. The product wasn't as, as nice as what I produced then. I mean, sometimes, you know, in my line of work, you have to make your own stuff. There's just no other way to do it. You have to make your own tools. But um, certain tools, if they're nice, it helps tremendously because you're producing a nicer part. And it's not as aggravating if you can make the piece exactly the way it needs to be instead of, like, you know, the tool sort of making it sort of half-ass and then you have to sort of make it work. Having the right tools does make the difference, but is it all you need to do some of the projects that I do? No. There's a lot inside of yourself that you have to have. I'm Jeb Greenstone. I'm a welder, machinist, engineer, metal shaper, and fabricator. I am Cutworm Specialties.